Hi everybody and welcome. In this video I'm going to talk about GPT-4 and give you a breakdown of the technical stuff that we know as well as like what I think about the system. If I were to summarize my feeling about GPT-4 I would use this meme here. Right, on the one hand I think this system is phenomenal and it's a clear leap towards artificial intelligence but at the same time I'm really concerned about the procedures that OpenAI is using to develop and distribute its system. Everything that I'm going to say about GPT-4 comes from OpenAI's technical report on GPT-4, which is the only technical paper. I wouldn't even really call it technical because there isn't much about the ins and outs of the system itself, but more about evaluation as you'll see in a second. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to really give you the good, the bad and the ugly of GPT-4. To be more specific, we're going to learn about what we know technically about the model and spoiler alert, it's not much. We're going to talk about the capabilities of GPT-4, its limitations, safety issues, as well as talk about the big problems that they see in the way the workflows that OpenAI is using to release such model. What do we know about the model? Very little, unfortunately, but some stuff like that comes out from the report is that for sure a GPT-4 uses transformers, but this is like self-evident, of course. The model is also multimodal, meaning that at input level, it can not only take text, but also images and reason both from text and images in order to generate text as output. So we have multimodality at the level of input, but not at the level of uh, the output. Then we know that the model has been trained on internet data and not really specified third-party data. There's really no transparency about the type of data that has been used to train uh, this model as well. It's very, very generic what you read in the report. Um, finally, we can say that uh, the model has been fine-tuned using reinforcement learning from human feedback. This is a variation of reinforcement learning where the human is in the loop and uh, the, the human is responsible to provide some level of feedback or rewards and penalties to uh, the model so that the model can encapsulate human insight as well as instructions more directly. Now, this technique has been used with a lot of success also in ChatGPT and it is a sort of variant of something that has been used before with more traditional AI techniques, namely genetic algorithms. And specifically, there's a variant of those that's called interactive generative algorithm, where the fitness function of the genetic algorithm is a person that provides direct feedback to the system. Okay, so one part of the technical report that's very detailed is the evaluation of the model. We know quite a lot about the capabilities of the model through this evaluation. So how were these evaluations carried out? Well, the model was tested on human exams like the SAT and a bunch of others as we'll see but also on academic benchmarks for large language models or language models. What we can see overall is that GPT-4 has a human level performance in most human exams and it tends to outperform state-of-the-art models on benchmarks for language models. So here we have a table with a list of many of the exams, the human exams that GPT-4 took. Let's examine some of this. So for example, the first one is a, an exam for lawyers, uniform bar exam. And here you can see like in three different columns, the 
difference in, difference in scores between GPT 3.5, which is chat GPT, GPT 4 with no vision, so text only, and then GPT 4 in its a multimodal version. And as you can see, the model does pretty, pretty well. It's in the 90th uh, percentile and it improves quite a lot on chat GPT. Now, let's take a look at other exams that look more at reasoning in terms of like math reasoning, quantitative reasoning and evidence-based uh, reading and writing. So, as you can see, uh, GPT-4 does pretty, pretty well in all of them. So it seems like that it, it is definitely capable of reasoning quite well. And you can see a great jump forward, uh, especially in the GRE quantitative exam from the 25th uh, percentile of chat GPT-3 or GPT-3.5 to the 80th percentile of GPT-4. Now, uh, the model does extremely well also on its verbal skills. It actually gets to the 99th percentile, which is quite remarkable. Where the model is a little bit uh, weaker, I would say it's in composition. So basically creating, writing, generating uh, text. And as you can see here, the model is in the case of the GRE writing is on the 54th percentile. But here, for example, in the case of AP English Literature and Composition, it doesn't perform that great at all. It's on a very low percentile. But then if we take a look at other um, exams, which are a little bit more notion based, you can see that the model does extremely well. For example, in AP art history or biology or environmental science, the model does really well. So it's capable of reasoning on notions quite effectively. Now let's move on to the second part of this table. And I want to highlight these final three exams or human exams that have to do with code pr production, specific, specifically with lead code problems, easy ones, medium ones, and hard ones. And as you can see, the model does, GPT-4 does quite well with easy problems, but with medium and especially with hard problems, it's not that great. Now let's move on and take a look at these other table, which provides us a, a list of academic benchmarks and how different models and also like state of the art do on all of this. And as you can see, GPT-4 basically outperforms all the state of the art models in most of these benchmarks. And the one that really drew my attention was this Hellas Wag, which is a, a task uh, that has to do with common sense reasoning around everyday events. And as you can see, GPT-4 performs incredibly well with accuracy level that arrive at above 95%, which is quite incredible. I'm particularly surprised by this result because traditionally infusing common sense into machines has always been a very hard task and it's never really been cracked. And here it seems at least like on this particular benchmark, GPT-4 is doing extremely well. Summarizing GPT-4's capabilities, we can say that the model uses semantics and syntax really well to create text, which is quite good. It has a clear knowledge about the world. It can reason about the world. It can do quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning, visual reasoning, quite well. It can make connections between things that are domains that are far apart and it has common sense. Now, I want to show you a, an example that they provide, that OpenAI provides in the technical report, which was quite shocking for me. So it's this one here. So the input is this one. Can you explain this meme? And this is the meme. So sometimes I just look at pictures 
of the earth from space and they marvel at how beautiful it all is. And you have the a picture of the world done in with chicken nuggets, which is quite funny, right? Let's take a look at GPT-4's explanation of this meme. So GPT-4 says, this meme is a joke that combines two unrelated things, pictures of the earth from space and chicken nuggets. So this sentence gives away the fact that GPT-4 is able to make connections about uh, different things and also to reason on uh, visual uh, input and to abstract that visual input because it is able to recognize that this is the uh, image of the earth, but it is done through chicken nuggets, which is quite incredible. And if we move on, the text of the meme suggests that the image below is a beautiful picture of the earth from space. And this draws on common sense and when we see those incredible images of the earth from space, right? So this is like clearly the fact that GPT-4 knows about those images and it's able to abstract. And then it goes on saying, however, the image is actually of chicken nuggets arranged to vaguely resemble a map of the world. And this is incredible, right? Because it, it's capable of like connecting together the typical Earth pictures from space with the fact that it's done with chicken nuggets. If we move on with GPT-4 explanation, we see that the humor in this meme comes from the unexpected juxtaposition of the text and the image. The text sets up an expectation of a majestic image of the earth, but the image is actually something mundane and silly. And here you can see how GPT-4 has that level of common sense, that level of reasoning that connects things that are detached and understands what's mundane and silly and what is sort of like incredible, like the image of Earth from space. So all in all, I think this example is quite powerful and it gives us an idea of the quite advanced capabilities of GPT-4. By watching all of these examples provided by the OpenAI team regarding GPT-4 behavior, I was wondering if language combined with multimodality is going to be the key for mastering intelligence, at least in machines. And I'm really curious for some research to be done in this model, psychological, cognitive um, research on this model. For example, I would love for cognitive scientists to perhaps try IQ tests with GPT-4 given that GPT-4 is now able to reason on visual images, visual inputs, and most of these IQ tests are based on visual patterns and recognition, and this kind of stuff. So I would be really curious to see whether uh, GPT-4 is able to reach a human level of intelligence on IQ tests. GPT-4 is obviously a very powerful model, but it has some limitations and things that are quite harmful. First of all, GPT-4 hallucinates, meaning that it provides you with text that's reasonable, but it's actually not factual. OpenAI provides a bar chart here, which is quite eye-opening, I would say. There's the level of factuality of different GPT versions uh, compared across different domains like learning, technology, writing, history, math, and so on and so forth. As you can see, GPT-4 does better than previous models, but at the same time, it still hallucinates. For example, in the case of, uh, say, history, 80% of the time what it writes is actually factual, but there is a 20% which is probably completely made up. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. These models are not fact-checked. So the, the production of these models is actually not factual 100% of the time. 
it's probably around 75-80% at best. Also, the model doesn't learn from experience, meaning that it doesn't learn from conversation that it has with the user. And this is a typical trait of human intelligence, the capability of adapting and learning from experience. Then we move on to safety challenges. And I think like this is probably the biggest one for me, disinformation. You have a model that is super powerful at generating stuff, made up stuff, and it can generate fake news or it can be used to generate fake news and to spread them. And people will have very little means to recognize whether that particular piece of text is truthful or if it's just fake news. And given the scale at which GPT-4 can build or develop such text, this is scary because it can be used for propaganda reasons or for pushing certain agendas using an incredible amount of computational power and text production. GPT-4 can also be used to generate harmful content like harassing content, instructions for finding illegal content or a content useful for planning attacks. These are just like a few of the many examples possible. Of course, OpenAI intends to use some uh, frameworks to avoid GPT-4 from producing this content, but as we've seen with ChatGPT, it's relatively easy to overcome these frameworks put in place to stop the generation of these models. So this is going to be another big issue with this problem. Then we have to address the elephant in the room, which is the way that OpenAI has built and put GPT-4 into production. This is a section of the technical report. And if we take a look at the highlighted sentence, it says, given both the competitive landscape and safety implications of large scale models like GPT-4, this report contains no further details about the architecture, including model size, hardware, training compute, data set construction, training method, or similar. Basically, what this is telling us is that there is no information whatsoever about GPT-4 apart from the minimal information that I've already uh, given you. And this is for me an incredibly problematic point. The lack of transparency with such powerful technology is a big threat and menace it in and of itself. The fact that we don't have transparency, it means it leads to the lack of reproducibility. There's no way of reproducing the results uh, that we have with GPT-4. And there's also a little bit of an irony here, and that is that OpenAI started on this mission our mission, OpenAI's mission, is to ensure that artificial intelligence benefits all of humanity. But if you lock your discoveries, your inventions, I should say, well, you're probably not benefiting all of humanity. You're probably benefiting yourself as a company. There's nothing bad about that, but I would say that this mission is absolutely in contradiction with the behavior of OpenAI. In my view, we're moving from an OpenAI towards a closed AI. And this is a big problem because artificial intelligence is not yet another technology. It, it has transformational power. And as we all know from the Spider-Man films, with great power comes great responsibility. And we as a society should ask tough questions. Like for example, should we agree to use such a powerful tool like GPT-4 having minimal information about it? I don't have a definitive answer to that. Actually, do let me know what do you think about this particular question and about GPT-4 in general. But I think that at least we should start asking these questions. Before I leave you, I just want to remind you that there's an amazing community called the Sound of AI community where you can discuss 
all of these issues and more. The community is very friendly, super supportive, and it has a particular focus on the application of artificial intelligence for audio, voice, and music. If you're interested, I would highly suggest you to go check it out. I'll leave you the link in the description box below. That's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Until the next time.